We're going to do part three of the landmarks of the skull, so here we go. We have the mastoid process. Mastoid process is part of the temporal bone. Sternocleidomastoid muscle attaches to it. You can see it right here. It's kind of, and mastoid suggests that it's supposed to look or resemble a mammary gland. So I don't think so. Okay, there's the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Then we have the middle concha. Middle concha is part of the ethmoid bone. It is right where the end of the probe is, right there. You can see a little shelf coming out. The concha are sort of curved surfaces and they cause turbulence when you're breathing and that helps warm the air, moisten the air, and filter the air. Then we have the nasal septum. Now the nasal septum is actually made of three things. I'm touching the nasal septum, superior portion of it, and that's the ethmoid bone. I'm now touching the inferior portion of the nasal septum, and that's the vomer. Those two come together sort of like the doors of a freight elevator. And then in between those and extending outward would be the septal cartilage, and that's uh, obviously not included in this skull. Septal cartilage is a um, uh, hyaline cartilage, and uh, it does form part of the nasal septum. Nuchal lines. Nuchal lines aren't too bad on this skull. We have three of them. There's an inferior nuchal line, there's a superior nuchal line, and a median or medial nuchal line. And those are formed by muscle attachment. So the muscles pull on that uh, part of the bone and we get a bump. We have the occipital condyles. The occipital condyles are part of the occipital bone. By the way, the nuchal lines are part of the occipital bone. The uh, occipital condyles look like the runners of a rocking chair, and they articulate with the atlas. Uh, if I were you, as you go through these, you want to make sure you know which bone has these landmarks on them, because that would be part of the answer on an exam. We have the palatine process. The palatine process is part of the maxillary bone. It is um, also part of the hard palate, and it extends back and articulates with the palatine bone. I'm going to show you on a colored skull because you can see where it ends. So this orange part up here is the palatine process of the maxillary bone. It gets its name for the bone it touches. Right here, this is the palatine bone. So the end of the palatine process is right at that crack there. Then we have the perpendicular plate. There are actually two perpendicular, three perpendicular plates in the skull. Uh, one on each of the palatine bone and one on the ethmoid and I'm going to touch it right there with the end of the probe. It's the superior portion of the nasal septum, and I'll show it to you on a white skull. There is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. Then we have the petrous ridge. The petrous ridge extends obliquely across here between the middle and posterior fossa of the skull. Petrous ridge means rocky, and it's named for Petrus the flying squirrel who found it. You can also see it here in the coach coast, uh, this kind of irregular, obliquely situated ridge. Then we have the pterygoid process. Pterygoid process is part of the sphenoid bone. You can see that with the color here. There's a medial and a lateral pterygoid process. The pterygoid processes on this skull here, lateral, and here medial, medial and lateral, um, they form points of attachment for the pterygoid muscles. Then we have the ramus. Ramus, part of the mandible, it's just part of the mandible here. Then we have the sagittal suture. The sagittal suture, as you might expect, would be in what plane? Right, sagittal plane. There's the sagittal suture right there. Between the two parietal bones, show it to you on a white skull. There's the sagittal suture right there. Okay, uh, then we have the cella tersica. Cella tersica, Turkish saddle is this depression right here. It's part of the sphenoid bone, and this is where the pituitary gland sits. Then we have the uh, squamous suture. The squamous suture, flat suture, between the temporal and primarily in the parietals. There's the squamous suture right there. So the temporal bone is shaped a little bit like a scallop shell.